Today we're going to continue speaking about uh, losses in piezoelectric materials and we're going to start uh, with loss of elastic compliance. So we have this term elastic compliance and the way we actually represent losses in, uh, as material properties is we have a, we say they're a complex number. So the piezoelectric, uh, you know, the elastic compliance is equal to the compliance so draw like that is equal to the compliance plus or rather minus the imaginary part of the compliance and these s um, prime terms and this s double prime term uh, represents the real part and the imaginary part. So let's get a better feeling of what these parameters mean. So when I apply a force on the material, uh, and we know the energy stored in a piezoelectric material, elastic energy, assume let's say we, are, we have a material where it has a polarization like this, and we have short circuited it makes everything a lot easier and then we apply a force with capital X or a stress over an area so we want to know what the energy stored is in this case so we know the compliance which is going to dictate the extension of the material is going to be the compliance under constant electric field because the electric field is zero because the sides are actually shorted together so uh, we will go and now calculate the energy. So the energy in this case we'll call U mechanical equals one half A L S E the strain squared. This is the um, uh, equation for the energy but we know I mentioned that this is the real portion that we were all all the time what we were speaking about was the real material property so the material property that we normally think about that that we can recover this kind of energy but at the same time we're doing irreversible work so when we apply a force to the material when we apply a force to the material we're also doing a different type of work which is work, let's say, mechanical lost. Let's call it ML. And that equals equal to one half A L S E double prime X squared. So the strain squared. So basically, the input energy that you would need, so let's draw this out. So we have this diagram. Uh, normally we would think about a perfect uh, but we would increase the force or strain or I mean stress and then we would get some strain out of it so this curve right here is SE remember because we had a uh, uh, capital X SE is equal to strain so we had this relationship earlier and this is how we're getting this equation and this is why the slope of this line is the compliance under constant electric field uh, for this material we are describing the next thing we want to do is try to define these terms on this picture so the stored energy in a perfect material would be this all this energy right here that I'm shading in and let me shade that in a little better so all of this energy in here, this would be normally the stored energy. But when we take back the energy, we don't go back down this line when we're, when we're releasing the force. We actually go down this line. Thus we'll have this. Uh, so then and finally we have this kind of loss energy as I mentioned that the energy we don't get back which is irreversible so the red color the red stripes are the lost energy 
the blue stripes are the recovered energy. So the red stripes refer to UML, which is basically the, the imaginary part. And the uh, real, you know, the recovered energy refers to UM, this plain UM here that we normally use for the uh, real elastic compliance. So then now if we want to sort of, you know, understand how do we relate U, these two U's, and how, how do we find out? So now I'm telling you, I'm, prov I'm providing such a stress to the material, how much does it strain? So we know we have two energies. So we have some input energy, and everything's mechanical, right? So we have some input electrical mechanical energy, and this is this whole, this whole kind of uh, thing. This is the input energy. So green, I'll write in green now since I drew that in green. The green is input energy. All right, you, uh, everything's mechanical, so I'm not going to write M. Equals the loss energy, which we're going to write U M L plus the stored energy, or the recovered energy, which is U M. I'm claiming that's U M, the recovered energy. So I mentioned to you that, okay, uh, if this is equal to one half a l over s I'm gonna leave off the e right now this is double prime because this to make the notation easier x squared this is one prime l x squared so this is the real energy this is the lost energy or the energy we can recover and the energy that we've lost and we have some expression for the input energy which you don't know yet we're trying to figure that out so then we have these two energies and for that st uh, stress and we, we applied a stress to the material so let's further simplify the equation And the way we need to simplify it, and the way we're going to simplify it is by showing this. So first we take all of these terms which are common. And we get 1 over S double prime plus 1 over S prime. And this is actually equal to... Um, multiply both sides by s prime so what we do here is we, we multiply this term by s prime over s prime and we multiply this term by s double prime over s double prime so what we end up getting is s prime s double prime s prime plus s uh, double prime over s double prime s prime. So this of course we can reduce and we can bring this equation over so we're going to get one half a l x squared. Normally we'd want to write the x squared at the end. So we're going to get s prime plus s double prime over s prime s prime. And then finally we add this term s prime sorry we add x squared so this is the actually the uh, equation which is going to relate uh, the input energy for a given stress but now uh, we're gonna have to use our brains a little bit I know it's not maybe you're too early in the morning to use your brain but uh, let's use our brains here so we know that if s is greater that means it's stiffer and it contains more energy for a given strain and we know that the loss the loss energy I'm telling you this 
is 100 times smaller than the um, than the stored energy. This is like minimum. Usually about 100 times smaller. So if the lost energy is 100 times smaller, then S double prime is going to be 100 times larger. Because see, this is the inverse value. You know, the energy is related to 1 over S, right? So because the energy is related to 1 over S, we actually get that 100 going on the other side for the stored energy. Therefore, uh, when we examine this equation right here, when we examine this part right here, we notice that S double prime is going to be a lot larger than S prime. So basically we can cancel out S prime. But we can't ignore this bottom part because it's a, it's a multiplication. So if you rewrite ui equals 1 half a over l s double prime over s prime prime over 1 prime x squared. Now we have found a equivalent s. So remember the old form was 1 over a l 1 over s x squared. So now the equivalent s we have as equivalent s s equivalent equals s prime prime s prime over s prime prime because this was a again this this kind of like 1 over s so then we have to flip this upside down so basically 1 over s e q equals this this thing right here so basically you have to flip it up upside down to get the real value so now we have found uh, the actual form of s double prime right and look what happens this cancels so the equivalent uh, compliance is uh, pretty much the same as the as the uh, real compliance so we can't really uh, we don't really say that the compliance changes because of the loss amount the compliance is pretty much the same so we kind of have to think about expressing losses in a different way one way we do express losses is as a ratio so when I say the ratio of s double prime to s prime so this this equation is is basically telling us the ratio between the energies. So if I apply if I apply a certain stress, you know, to that short circuited uh, piezoelectric condition, if I apply that certain stress, then how much energy would be stored in electrical energy? I mean, how much energy would be stored, and how much energy would be lost? We can we can find out that ratio at least. From this from this ratio right here so when we're actually interested in the ratio and more practically we consider the ratio we consider the ratio like this uh, because the one over the energy lost over one over the energy stored because that's what the s is proportional to so what ends up happening is we have the energy energy stored over the energy lost so we, and we end up having the energy loss of the energy stored. And this term is actually called a loss tangent. And we'll explain why that, what is loss tangent. But believe it or now, this term is called a loss tangent. Basically, it's a ratio. It's a ratio between the imaginary and the real uh, properties of the material. So it dictates how much energy is reversible versus how much energy is lost in the material system. And we relate this ratio and we call it a tangent, a loss tangent. And in this case, uh, we're using compliance, but all the other properties also have this property as well. And it's expressed in percentage. So like let's say 0.1% loss tangent. It's express, expressed like something like this. We'll continue in the next lecture. Thank you.